Normally, this technology is known as UPSH. Now, try to say it quickly about 10 times in a row. In the, in the engineering world, um, they call a plant like Ludington pump hydro storage because it's pump based. They're pumping water and it's hydropower that they're storing. Um, so PSH or pumped hydro storage. So when the engineers started thinking about underground, they just put underground in front of that and it became UPSH, which is just a terrible acronym. PUSH is just so much better. So we call it uh, pumped underground storage hydropower, a much more elegant term. One day, uh, Roman came into my office and he'd just come back from a conference in the UK and um, um, had been out running his dog at the Quincy Mine. And, and he came and said, you know, Tim, you're an archeologist. You've been studying mining here for a bunch of years. Um, um, why, why doesn't anyone in the, in the UP use hydropower? And, um, and I, I sort of stopped and thought about that for a bit. And we started chit chatting about energy systems and the history of mining development and the communities. Um, um, and we started to discuss this question of energy storage, Roman explained about this uh, case study of a, of a slate mine in Wales that's been adaptively reused for a push facility um, that's partly, uh, it's partly underground and it's, it's not a closed loop, it's an open system, but it works very effectively and is, is um, um, an important asset there in, in uh, the UK on their energy system. And we started talking about why that hasn't happened here. Why is it no one has thought about adaptively reusing our mines in this way? What gave me this idea was essentially my background um, in law, uh, my training and background in law, and uh, realization that um, large systems, large storage systems, they're incredibly hard to permit, and they're incredibly hard to permit conventional uh, pump storage systems because of the obvious reasons. They're large, they're industrial looking facilities. Some people find them uh, aesthetically objectionable. Some, uh, they do come with an environmental impact. And frank, frankly, there are not that many sites uh, that one can find, especially in places that are densely populated. So I, I thought, well, I mean, um, a, a solution would be to put a system um, a large battery, if you would, um, inside a mine. So, and uh, although the idea sort of emerged from uh, this realization, from this um, uh, trying to solve um, a very real permitting problem, um, it really um, evolved into something that is, um, that I think a social sci scientist is uniquely positioned to address which is not to approach to this question from an engineering standpoint, but before talking about the suitability, the feasibility, the technical specs of a particular mine, to really look into what this facility can do. And what this facility can do is not just limited to solving the greatest problem, environmental problem that the world currently faces it is capable of solving multiple problems. And what I think is, is what really makes us uniquely positioned um, to, to do this study, and that's what really is different about this study than the previous studies um, um, that looked into technical push mm -hmm. visibility. We, we really value our, our colleagues who have such technical excellence in all aspects of the science and engineering uh, because we were able to put together a team from all over campus, from every college on campus. And that team brought all their brain power to this problem. But what we mean when we, when we, when we talk about this as not being centered on the technical problems is that it, it wasn't a purely technical or economic, engineering or economic analysis. It looked at a bigger picture which totally revolutionized the way we think about this project. 
It's and in this holistic approach, really, Tim, it's based on this fundamental question in energy studies: um, what energy is for? And then there's also this concept called, called um, energy justice, and energy justice adds to it of what en what what energy is not supposed to be doing, what energy projects are not supposed to be doing. So they're supposed to be not unduly interfering with people's ability to flourish. So have this environmental impact, have the uh, negative social impact, or have a positive economic impact that is time limited. So when you start asking questions, design questions, engineering design questions, from that standpoint, not from the technical feasibility of a particular mine or technical feasibility of a particular uh, um, say turbine, turbine machinery, right, that actually does generate uh, power. But when you ask, all right, so what can this, what can this, this particular facility do to, to, a, to a community? What can, uh, what can that facility do to make sure that the environmental damage is remediated, creating that revenue base, for example, right? So, or what can that facility do in terms of not having to go and dig another hole in the ground and, pretend, and, and, and impact the landscape, the ecosystems and whatnot, if you already have a place where this system can work. So all these questions is really what, um, what help us to um, sort of set this, set this foundation, work off this important consideration, the most important consideration that it can be translated, it can be conveyed into things like design parameters or design process of how you go about designing things. So you actually are addressing um, real life problems and, and not interfering with people's lives. Another really interesting aspect of push development is that this facility will work no matter what the energy supply system is and how it evolves. It doesn't matter, like at the Ludington plant in Michigan, which has been operating profitably for more than 50 years with uh, nuclear power and coal powered plants. Um, um, it could also operate to accommodate a growing um, alternate green energy like solar panels and wind farms. Um, it could be all these different kinds of things mixed together. Um, you don't need to rely on any particular energy generation technology, but you could also co-design them so that as the energy system is evolving, push can be built into it to work in the most effective and profitable manner.